Hey guys, welcome back. We got another one. It's gonna be a Nissan this time. It's a minivan, the Nissan Quest 2004. So this one's got a intermittent no start issue. So what I mean by that is that sometimes it wants to start and sometimes it doesn't want to. So I already checked the battery. The battery is fine. It's actually two years old and it is um, it's got 12, I think it was like 12.5, 12.6 volts when the vehicle is off. So it's, it's okay. So let me show you. For some people, um, some people don't really know where the starter is on this one. I've seen, uh, videos on YouTube where people are asking where it is because people, some, some YouTubers have, um, basically shown when they're doing the repair but they got the camera all the way in here and they don't really explain exactly where the starter is so the starter is underneath this right here way down there so we're gonna get to that we're gonna um we're not really gonna say automatically the starter is the issue it could just be a bad wire but we need to take it out so we can test it um, and test the wire. Here's the thing, to get to the wire, it is very, very tricky. Um, that's why I need to start by uh, taking some parts off. So let me show you, let me get my light. Starter, it's all the way down there. Let me try to... Get my flashlight to touch it okay so you see right here that's where it is so it's underneath these two hoses right here so that's that's the starter right there and as you can see the space is not very friendly so gotta remove uh start by removing this so you can then get to the long pipe and take this uh breather hose off and start by doing that and obviously take that wire i mean that connector off i think uh i don't think these got anything to do with it uh i don't think so so it should be everything here it's kind of tight it, it is a minivan so everything is very very tight they they have a basically brand new uh uh master cylinder that's pretty cool um but yeah we need to get down there somehow so i would say take off what's in the way first and find out what else is in the way because um i need to get to that one wire that uh sends the signal to the starter to say okay let's turn on the car um because it could be that one wire maybe that wire is bad this is a 2004 so maybe that wire has gone bad but we need to we need to test it instead of throwing the parts cannon so i'm i'm actually just gonna take it out and uh test it outside of the engine <sighs> to see whether the you know it, it could be the the starter solenoid it could be the starter itself it could be the starter solenoid wire coming from the vehicle we gotta find all all of that stuff so let's get on it Okay, so let's start off by uh, taking off those parts that I just mentioned. Okay, so normally I would use one of these pliers that has um, uh, these very adjustable uh, parts for you to grab onto the hose clamp and, you know, wiggle it or move it out of the way. 
But let me show you a different one that I also have. I don't use this one a lot, but it's this one right here. You've probably seen this one in auto parts stores or on Amazon. It's for the same thing, but these are mostly used for those that are easy to access. For example, this one is a very easy one. So let me show you how easy it is to use this. You just put it right here and voila, take it out of the way, right? It's that simple, you see? But if it were a tight spot, you wouldn't want to use this one. You probably use the other one because the other one you can just turn it in any angle that you like. Or you could use the one that's very long and flexible in a situation where it's very, very, very tight to get in with a clamp. I mean, with a <laughs> with a clamp plier or hose clamp plier. So we got this one off. And uh, wow, that feels very brittle. Feels like stuck in there real good. And it's a breather hose. Shouldn't be... I don't think it should be that brittle. If this is original, I would, I would expect it to be brittle. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised or too surprised. And then we got to use ten millimeter, ten millimeter socket to remove this right here. Clamp. And then we're going to come in over here. Let's see, you guys probably not seeing that. We come in over here and remove this connector. There we go. And then you're going to come over to this side. There are two hooks. One right there. The other one's over here. Wow. Okay. And then should be able to lift. Move that cable out of the way. Okay. We should also be able to wiggle this off. Because I did loosen this off, so there we go. Okay, there we go. And that's that. So ooh, that's a lot of dirt. <laughs> that's a lot of dirt. Sorry. I guess there's a lot of dirt going through this filter. Let's see. Oh, this filter has a broken part. That would be why. Okay, let me uh... It's a little broken here. Uh, oh, very broken. <laughs> oh, man. I think this filter needs replacing. Yeah. I'm gonna let them know about it. Yeah, needs replacing. I would say so. I mean, if there was dirt in here, in this part, I would say so. Yeah, I think this filter needs to be uh, replaced. So, I'll let them know about it. Um, will you go back to your home? There we go. Okay. All right, so let me move this out of the way. Okay. Now we need to get uh, the one all the way over there. Let me show you. Uh, you can barely see it from here. I don't think you'll be able to see it no matter what I do. Eh, sort of. Let me point it out with a flashlight. It's so far in there. We're going to get to that one over there. Maybe you can see it right here. So you see where the uh, flashlight's coming in through? That's where I'm going to be bringing in with my, my tool to loosen that one off. Probably in your way of such, but maybe. Okay. I don't think this has ever been taken off. Uh, nah, it could be definitely wrong about that, but it feels like it's so brittle. The clamp is completely loose. This is very brittle. Okay, I'm gonna change my plan of action here. I'm going to go ahead and take off this cover so I can have clear access to this hose clamp right in here. 
hopefully you see that there's one right in here for this particular breather hose i'm gonna go take this off something that bolts up there okay that one's not coming out of there for this one okay we'll make it a lot shorter So here is the hose that I'm talking about. I mean the, the hose clamp. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think this hose needs uh, attention. It's very, very brittle right here. I'll show you once I take it off, but it is very brittle at the, at the end. Okay. show you here what I mean you see how these hoses are already asking to get replaced look at that one yeah sadly that's probably what's gonna be happening because it doesn't even it doesn't even bend anymore like literally no I think this hose needs to get replaced. Okay, so now let me get in here. There is there was something here. And it's no longer there. Whatever it was. It's no longer there. Let me see if I can come in the other way. Cannot even rotate it, even though the clamp is all loosed up already. Okay, so this is what I meant. I was gonna get. Hopefully, I can uh, get it off of this. There we go. Got it. Sometimes using the right tool will get you out of that tight spot. So here it is. It was uh, pretty good just getting it right back here and just start pulling. And it got it out. Okay. Now we got better access to, to everything that has to go with the starter. I see that these two hoses, oh this is tied up to oh, that bracket, that metal bracket right here. Okay, that's not going to go anywhere. Okay, so let me take a look down there. Show you guys the same thing I just saw. Okay, so down here, that's the starter. Starter solenoid is just underneath these two hoses, these two very annoying hoses. So there's the wire I'm going to disconnect and uh the solenoid wire is down there you can barely that connector right about there it's got uh, a wire right after that connector that runs up here show you these two you see that little thing in the middle right there on the screen so that goes to the solenoid and that 
leads down to that connector over here. <sighs> so, yeah, that's gonna be fun. But uh, let's let's go ahead and do it and do the best I can to give you a good sight, a good viewing. Um, let's see. Might not be able to. Who knows? Let's go get these um, uh, battery terminals taken off. Tell me your time. Yes. Yes, you are. And just to be safe. Oh, wow. I thought this was tight. It's just laying there. Wow. Okay. Up you go. Up. Up. Wow, so many wires. That's, that's really something. And then this one, I can barely turn it with my finger here. Yes, no, yes, yes, okay. That's, that's gonna be a while. Oh wow, that's even taped up. <laughs> got tape down there yeah I don't think I can move that out of the way but um at least I'll try to get this one Okay, now let's see, I need to get a shorter extension, yeah, I'll be right back. Alright, so guys, I have to actually use a 12 millimeter wrench, 12, and um, don't worry, I'll, I'll, let me see, I'll try to zoom in for you guys. So, we're coming in here to this right here, and uh, yeah, so we gotta go basically a quarter of a turn every single time till we actually get it off. I think I should be able to turn it by hand now. Let's see. Yep. Okay, so it's coming off. There we go. Got it. Should be able to Move this wire out of here. Ah, this wire is so, it's like stuck in one position. Doesn't, let me see. Unless there's another bolt holding it. If it's got like a double, double, um, there's another bolt down here. I don't know if it's actually part of the same bracket. Come on, you. There we go. Okay. So the power wire is disconnected. I'm going to be testing that later. Now we need to worry about other wire. This one. Let me just shove this over this way. Do not pinch my gloves. Okay. 
So, so you see these two, okay, that's probably too bright for, for the camera. I'm actually just gonna go use, hold on. I'm gonna use the flashlight on the actual camera. All right, so. This wire, you don't even have to worry about it. That is attached to the other bolt over here. Focus camera, there you go. So that bolt, I mean that nut right there, you don't have to loosen it off. Now we gotta go to the one down here where my finger is pointing at. Down there, that that one right there. That's That one's gonna be fun. Because we got these two hoses, which they're not friendly. Not friendly as we kind of wish it was. Um, to get it off. You see that connector down there? So that's the guy we got to loosen out. That one, I'm probably not going to be able to, to record. So, yeah. We're going to do our best we can. Because uh, after we get those connectors, all, all those wires disconnected, we can go ahead and, you know, take the two bolts off for the starter and pull it out of there. But let's see how we're going to do that one. So, since you guys are not going to be able to see the action, I'll just skip over to where I took the, the wire off. Alright guys, so... Exactly what did I do? Let me show you right here. Let me turn off this flashlight because it's, it's too bright for the screen. Okay, so got it out. As you can see, it's disconnected right down there. Okay, so exactly how? Well, I grabbed flathead, I pushed down on the tab at the top and then I started doing like started going like that and push it that the other way basically it you put it down like that push down and then push in that direction and I was able to get it off on the third I think it was the third or fourth try and I was able to get it off now we need to get to those bolts holding the starter to uh, to its mountain location. So we got, no, that's the wrong thing. <laughs> okay, so it's gonna be a very tight squeeze. To get everything here, let me. I don't know if you can see that. There is a... You kinda see it. I don't know if that's one. I gotta check the repair manual, but I think that is one of the two. But man. Yeah, I gotta... Let me throw my hand down here. See if I can feel a bolt. Yeah, I got I feel one here. Yup, that's one down here. Where is the other one? Mm-hmm. I mean, I think the other one's gotta be that one. It's the only bolt I see up here. Uh it's the only bolt I see. I'm gonna check. I'm gonna check the um, the manual and uh, get back to you guys. Okay, so I was on the correct matter here. Um, so that one bolt that you see right there—that's one of the two mounting bolts for the starter. And the other one is over here right over there that's the other one 
so yeah so that one over here is a 17 millimeter and this one the one way back there that's a 15 yeah that was my elbow <laughs> Okay, so leave that there. I'm gonna get the other one now. The one that's at 17. I need a light. Definitely gonna need, gonna need a longer ratchet. Luckily, I have this one, which is, comes in handy for moments like these. Put the, I put down the wrong thing. Okay. Ooh. Man, that was tight. Oh, that one's tight. Very, very tight. That's not coming off, so let me go get my half inch socket. Okay. If that wasn't long enough. I'm gonna have to go with this one. Show them who's boss. Let's see. Otherwise, I'm gonna have to bring out my breaker board. That's what's. That's basically what's next. There we go. Okay, I don't need this humongous thing anymore. I can go back to the 3 8 Look at the size of this thing. Wow. Okay, got the bottom one off. Let's finish taking off the upper one with a 14. That's going to be amazing to take it off. Okay, so. We're to the point where basically this bolt here is pretty loose. But I didn't realize that this assembly right here is caught up. It's got a, like a little hook. 
look at behind, look at where the uh, bolt is and look right behind the bolt head, it's got a hook. And that hook is for this um, water assembly here that I can't lift up anymore because of this bracket right here, this bracket. So I need to take off, I need to take off, I hate this. So I need to take this off right here. Yeah, I gotta use a, a flathead screwdriver to make this uh, let go of the uh, plastic bracket. Yeah, and then I need to loosen off. Let's see if I can. You see that? You see that uh, bolt right over there? I need to take that thing off so then this bracket here can come off this bracket and then all this be kind of loose out of the way so let's get on it So here's the 14. Only I could just get this socket on the bolt, the little bolt that's over here. There we go. Let's see if we can get it off. Let's see, let's see, let's see. I'm probably gonna drop it. Would you look at that? It got stuck. <laughs> so this little bolt is what's holding that bracket that I showed you guys in place. Now I can move this out of here. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. With that bracket out of the way, should be able to should be able to there we go <clears throat> telling you this is bad design this is way some cars are designed it's just unexplainable there we go come on alrighty got it golly Let's go test it. All right, so to test, um, we got we, we got to test both the starter and the cable signaling the solenoid to do its work. So what I first did was remove. You see that connector right there? I removed it from way down underneath those two hoses, and 
um, what I actually used was a uh, let me just show you what I so I used this right here and I got from the back underneath and I pried up it wasn't that difficult to pry it up but it went up and uh, I was able to loosen that out of there and there it is so I'm actually just gonna leave it like that for the customer because you know if I ever if anybody ever has to do that again I'm actually helping them out a little bit by having that uh, loose where it is because man it is it was a little difficult trying to do it with a flat head screwdriver um, but yeah anyways this is the setup um, that you're gonna need to uh, have this work correctly we're gonna test if power is going through that uh, wire so I already tested it I already know the results but I don't want to spoil it for you guys I already just do it again so you guys can see so I got my uh, battery jumper it's not the best one in the world but it's uh it's working so I got the uh well it's turned off right now but negative to negative positive to positive and I got my multimeter here and I got the negative pole right on this so it's not really gonna uh fall off it's just right there kind of kind of tight it's touch it's touching that little bit right there yeah so and then we got the red one with alligator clips because obviously that is a pin not really a um a, a slot for you to to put the uh the a little point of this thing in there so uh you got to use the alligator clips and uh that's how i was able to hook it up as you can see okay and we're going to test if there's power going through that wire so we got to put this guy at 12 volts oops right there and we're going to turn on this guy uh i'm going to turn it on right after i mount you guys to my tripod okay and i'm just going to have you guys watch the multimeter uh give out numbers so i'm going to turn on the battery jumper turned on now i'm going to go inside Before I forget to mention, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go inside, put the key in, and pretend I'm trying to turn on the car. I'm going to do it three times. Three times. All right, so I'm pretty sure you were able to see that number, that 0, 0, 0.00, turn into like 11 point 60, 11 point something like that, three times. So that indicates us that there is power going through that wire when you put on the key and turn it to, you know, start the engine. Um, so enough of that. Now let's go back to the starter. And if you guys remember what I had said at the beginning, uh, the problem that the uh, customer is having is that the engine would start and not start in intermittently. I think I said that wrong. So it, it, would, it would have this intermittent problem where it would be a no start. So it would not even crank. So then I tested the I tested the uh starter off camera and at first it was not wanting to do it. 
And then it wanted to do it. So I was actually having that intermittent problem that the customer is having. So I got this, uh, I got these wires here, these uh, jumper wires. I got the uh, battery that came with the customer's vehicle. And it's actually giving me 12 full bolts. So it's fully charged. Um, and oh, almost forgot. <laughs> I need to get the alligator clips from over here so I can test the other thing. So, okay. All right, so what we're gonna do is uh, test out this guy. I've already done it a few times. And like I mentioned, at first, at first it would just, it felt weird, it felt gooey. Yeah. So at first it would pop out, but then it would spin very, very slow. And then, uh, after a while of testing it out, it actually cranked real quick. So let's see if on camera it would give me that in, in the uh, problem where it would just pop out but spin very slow. Obviously, I already know it's already done it to me. Um, so I'm guessing my, my, my money is on the starter right now. Because uh, the power wire is working. Uh, I mean, not, not the power wire. The wire that goes connected here, which gives a signal to the uh, solenoid to make the starter start. <clears throat> so, let's see. Let's give it a try. I'm going to connect the jumper wires to the battery. Exactly what I'm doing right now. As you can see, negative and negative. Positive, positive. Let me, uh... Get my gloves. So... <clears throat> These, th this wire, what I'm gonna do is put one tip on the positive cable coming from the battery. And I'm gonna put the other one on the uh uh on this part right here inside so the negative side of this goes connected to the base where it goes mounted to the uh the engine let me show you like that okay now this guy you're gonna put it to the uh the stud that's coming out that's kind of like a copper color so you're going to put it to that don't put it to the other one the one that has a wire and a nut on it don't put it to that one put it to the one that's going directly to the solenoid right here that's where you want to put it okay now this one this guy you can, since this set of jumper wires has a piece of metal back here, hopefully you can see it right there. So that piece of metal basically helps you just to hook up this right here. What I'm gonna do right now, I'm gonna hook it up, okay? And now you're gonna grab this point right here and you're gonna put it in here, inside of this connector. And we're gonna watch for this part, the, the the motor, do its thing. If it pops out but spins very slow, or it doesn't spin at all, then we got a problem with um with the motor. But if it spins and it doesn't exactly, if it spins but it doesn't pop out, we got a problem with the solenoid. So my, the problem I was seeing is that it would pop out, but spin very slow, very, very slow. Let's see if it does it now. Let's see, I'm using the battery from the vehicle. 
And there we are. It's doing it quick now. It's doing it like it should be. So, I don't know why earlier it wasn't doing it like that. Let me get a better bite on the uh, on the wire. You see? So, now it's not giving me the, the problem. It was giving it to me earlier. Oh, alligator clips snapped out but um but yeah yeah um what i'm probably gonna do is tell the customer we can get a new starter and um yeah and see if that solves the problem still reading that battery jumper is turned on as you can see at the little corner of the video here on the left and take another you see that it's having like a hmm you saw my voltage 12.1.8 I mean 12.2 basically and now it did it correctly. You saw the first one. The first one, it popped out and it turned really slow. Now on this one, it did it quickly. Now it's doing it quickly. And I haven't done any changes. And you've seen this on the video now. It it's, uh, apparently seems to happen. Whenever the engine is um, cold, cause um, I let this sit for like half an hour after that last uh, video where I showed you using the actual car battery um, on this thing. So I let it sit there for like half an hour without turning it on. And on the very first one, right here, right now, live with you guys, on the very first one, it popped out and it turned slow. And then on the second one, since it was already warmed up, it spun fast. So, I believe the problem is here in the the starter motor. It could be, since it's popping out, I think the, the motor itself is just old. It is original. It is the original starter motor for 2004. That's a pretty good starter motor. I mean, 2004, 20 years later, it goes out. I mean, it seems like it's got still like a pretty good amount of torque. But I'm pretty sure that... You can hear like a little bit of rattle inside. Um... And I don't think that's normal. Let's. Uh, hopefully, you guys are able to catch that little rattle right after it catches the the a good amount of speed. You can hear like a little rattle coming out of there. Maybe I don't know if you guys are being able to hear that, but maybe if I bring you guys a little closer, you might be able to hear it. I don't know if you guys were able to hear that. Let me do it again. And you guys can see that when this is at speed, it also ra it, it like shakes a little bit. Let me, just look at this area right here. I'm going to do it again. So I'm thinking that probably the brushes inside are just bad, um, not giving that good amount of current, because this could actually just be a small amount of torque, and it feels like it's a lot since it's outside. Basically, this is a bench test, um, and as you can see, voltage on my uh, 
on my uh and just shade it up you can still 12.1 so the voltage on my on my big guy over here it's still good and once again yeah I'm pretty sure if when we get the new starter this would probably spin even faster and who knows maybe this would you know do that even more so yeah i think we need to replace this guy after seeing that um because uh voltage is not the issue i tested the cable coming to, to this one right here from the vehicle i tested it with the battery jumper and the actual battery that came with the car and i'm i'm getting 12 volts so uh i don't think that's the problem and i uh, on the one that for the battery jumper i tested it three times with you guys and i tested it four times with the card battery and it always gave me 12 volts so that's not the problem the problem is in here um so i'm going to tell them Hey, let's get it uh, replaced and see what happens.